legitimate from the get-go. Uh, you know, we'll know more about that as we proceed, uh, but there doesn't appear to be a, a scrap of legitimacy to it here, except maybe over the course of eight years, one or two occasional uh, donations were given to someone in Ohio to give the appearance that it's a legitimate organization. Uh, so I would say that the entire panoply of charitable solicitation laws appear to have been violated, uh, and that's fraud, uh, and uh, you know the potential conversion of monies from legitimate to illegitimate purposes, which we'll have to examine further, uh, would be further instances of fraud. He said there, the the address that was listed on the registration was a was a PO box. Uh, why wasn't that caught it's right away? It's listed in such a way as to seem like an address. Uh, I believe it's uh, you know XXX Vine Street, number you know 342, for example. So that it appears to be an at a street address and an office number. Okay, it isn't listed as a PO box. If it were listed as a PO box, I assume that even when the registration itself was first filed, that would have been caught. But it's it's deliberately and misleadingly listed in such a way as to appear to be a physical uh, office address. Uh, and I'm sure that was done. And is that is that address actually the post office, or is that, it? A that's actually the, the UPS drop box in Cincinnati. Have you spoken to anybody who donated and felt deceived? Uh, well, we have received complaints about the organization, uh, but uh, but no, I have not at this point. Uh, although we have an ongoing uh, examination, we're now in court, uh, and there will be further proceedings. Here. You said that they do have an attorney in Ohio. Does it say here who that person is? Uh, it does. Is there any action being pursued against that individual through the disciplinary council or any other uh, uh, bar association or anything like that? I would say that all our options are open at this point. Uh, we have uncovered enough here to find that this organization seems to be uh, disturbing and, and fraudulent. And uh, you know, there's a number of connections to Ohio, including uh, political contributions, the fact that Ohioans were built, it appears, for almost two, two million dollars. Council being located here, uh, but we will see more as we go. Do you know what they're trying to achieve by making these political contributions? We don't. Uh, that's another sort of question mark, sort of mystery surrounding this. It was extensive. Uh, the FEC website indicates uh, something close to $200,000 in contributions that were made, so it's not a, not a small uh, undertaking. Uh, and there were a number of public officials who received contributions. A disproportionate number in Ohio, but also others around the country. Are you aware of legislation in Ohio favorable to this group? Uh, we're not at the moment, but uh, it, it raises those questions. Although uh, the bulk of contributions in Ohio, as best we can tell, were directed at federal candidates. So uh, what the federal agenda was, uh, we, we don't know at this point. So you found a few examples of uh, good works, scattered examples. What's the standard for legitimacy? Well, I, th there have been occasions where, for example, they paid to fly a veteran for an operation, say, uh, they read, maybe they read something in the newspaper, something came to their attention, and they actually ponied up some money. They've done that on, you know, maybe a half dozen occasions, maybe more over the years. But that's a far cry from raising, you know, in the neighborhood of 10 or 20 million dollars and then having virtually none of that go to veterans, which is what appears to be the case here. In fact, he funneled into other other spending instead, uh, the scope of which we don't get now. What's the next step? The uh, next step is for us to uh, fight to get these temporary restraining orders in place, uh, to continue coordinating with other states that are undertaking their own investigations. You know, Florida is a key state because that's where he's physically located. Although when you begin looking into Bobby Thompson, he's a very shadowy figure. Uh, he's had something like 40 different addresses listed over the last 20 years in a, in a number of states. None of the addresses, as best I can tell, in Ohio. Uh, so there, there's much more to come, I would expect, and it may shed more light on other directions we should take here to protect Ohioans. There are further developments. We'll, of course, keep you posted. Are you satisfied that we to me that we could consider whether we are taking aggressive enough steps when people file a registration statement? And of course, there's thousands, maybe tens of thousands of charities that do that every year. Uh, with computerization, I assume that a uh, better job can be done. But the reality is if somebody files, amongst the many filing, uh, uh, and they're determined to perpetrate a fraud, uh, you know, it, it can be a little while before that can be uncovered. But why it would have taken eight years is, is hard to explain. Okay.